Seasonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from KitGuru and today I'll be taking a look at the Antec Mercury 240 RGB, a 240mm radiator AIO cooler with RGB lighting built in. Currently it's available for £94.99, although some deals have been found as low as £80. It does seem like a pretty reasonable offering for an RGB equipped cooler, but with brands offering software support or even addressable RGB lighting for between about £15 or £30 more, it'll be interesting to see if it's worth stretching for these added features. So let's take a look at the kit. In the box we find tons of accessories, firstly a very large bag full of mounting hardware for current Intel and AMD mounts, and a second monster bag of cables including fan splitters, LED controllers and motherboard RGB header adapters. Two 120mm fans are also in the box along with a pretty comprehensive set of instructions and of course the cooler itself. Taking a look at the fans, they both feel very nice, very solid, high quality rigid plastic through the frames with rubber isolation pads built into each corner. Each fan features nine blades and an outer white ring which is designed to light up along with the fan blades. The fans are both 4-pin PWM with a range of RPM between 900 and 1800 and interestingly there are two 4-pin fan style connectors, one to control the fan speed and the second for the lighting. A little bit confusing initially but the connections to control lighting for each fan are of course labelled and the cables themselves a little bit shorter so there is certainly a distinction which can be made. Both cables are also braided which is excellent. Moving on to the included adapters and cables, there is still braiding throughout which is great to see. Included we have a single 2 3 times 4 pin pin PWM splitter for the included fans. Interesting to see it's not just a dual fan splitter here. Presumably this is because Antec do offer a 360mm radiator version with 3 fans uh, so the same adapter can work for both kits. But of course for the 240 it does mean that you can add a third PWM fan, uh, maybe as like an exhaust in your case. For configuring the RGB LEDs for the cooler, a small inline controller is included. This features three 4-pin connections for the two fans and of course the CPU block, and for power it's great to see a SATA connection rather than a 4-pin Molex, something I'd like to actually see from more manufacturers. A second adapter is included with the controller swapped out for a 4-pin RGB motherboard header connection so that lighting can be configured through software. Antec do advertise support for Asus Aura Sync, but realistically you should be covered as long as your motherboard supports a 4-pin RGB header. Finally, we have quite an interesting cable for just the CPU block. At one end we have SATA connection for power, again great to see rather than Molex, and just as with the fans, a 4-pin fan style connector for the CPU block lighting. At the other end we actually have a mini USB connection which attaches directly to the pump. This is a bit of an interesting move for Antec and I've only really come across this kind of connection with more heavily software control coolers uh, from brands like Corsair say. Initially I thought this might have been the case for the Antec Mercury 240 RGB but as the end of the cable doesn't terminate with an internal USB header connection it's pretty clear this cable is purely there to power the pump and the LEDs rather than control either. Looking through the mounting hardware I must say all of the components and packaging labelling is really impressive. Antec's attention to detail with labels for not only all of the cables but also each piece of the mounting kit is a real breath of fresh air. Even each of the fans being packed separately with their own mounting screws strikes me as really above and beyond what you'd normally expect with an AIO cooler. Taking the cooler out of the box, what struck me first is just how solid and well built the unit feels. The radiator itself isn't really a game changer at 274 by 119 by 27 millimeters, but I do prefer the square aesthetic, a little bit reminiscent of EKWV rads. The tubing feels nice and thick, which is reassuring, uh, but it's still flexible. It's also coated in really heavyweight nylon braided sleeving, which not only helps with a cleaner aesthetic, but also some durability and at 350mm long, plenty of length to reach the front and top of your case. The pump also feels surprisingly weighty and well built. Overall, the look of the CPU block is pretty novel. To me, it looks a little bit like the top of like a beer keg. Not sure if this was the inspiration, just the first thing that struck me. And the whole outside is covered in a white rubber coating. This is a separate piece rather than stuck on and looks to have been included primarily for looks rather than for any actual performance benefits. 
The pump dimensions come in at 80 by 80 by 60 millimeters, so pretty big, but realistically I couldn't see the CPU block hitting any issues with component clearances. Taking a look around the outside, we find the small mini USB port for, of course, the power cable. One small criticism I came across with the CPU block is the rotary connections for the tubing. With the Antec Mercury 240 RGB, I found these connections to be almost rock solid, in the sense that they would barely turn at all. A little bit worrying, as when trying to get them to turn, I found I was putting so much pressure on these connections, I was actually concerned I would snap them or break something. After a couple of rotations, they did loosen up a little bit though, uh, just a little bit scary out of the box. It is worth noting that thermal compound is included and pre-applied, uh, but of course, as usual, this was removed to ensure consistency with our testing. With everything out the box, I have to say how impressively premium the Antec Mercury 240 RGB foot feels. The cooler itself is a really heavyweight, well-built piece of kit, really no complaints here, and all of the accessories being so well labelled and packaged, along with all of the included cables and adapters being braided, really makes the cooler feel like a significantly dearer AIO than its 80 to 90 pound price point. This being said, all of this could hinge on installation, so let's move on to getting the cooler mounted. As we test performance on the Intel Z170 platform, installation of course will reflect this. So starting with the back plate, there are four long screws which need to be passed through the mounting holes, and as they are hex-ended, the screws kind of lock into place with a pressure fit. With all four installed, you can then slot the back plate into place on the rear of your motherboard. Four standoffs can then be installed. These do need to be screwed down over the four long mounting screws, um, and one issue I did find when screwing them down is that they would actually come loose and just freely spin, so it's definitely worth making sure that you still have access to the rear of your motherboard during installation. With the standoffs firmly screwed into place, the CPU block itself needs to be set up. There are a couple of brackets included, a set for Intel and for AMD, uh, which can be mounted to the sides of the blocks with four small screws. Once the CPU block is ready, you can apply thermal compound if required, place the block atop your CPU and mount it down using four included thumb screws. A pretty simple process overall that only took around about five minutes, uh, really the only hindrance being the four longer screws, which would fall out of the back plate from time to time. Connecting up all of the cables is also relatively simple. As our test board doesn't include an RGB header, I elected to use the included controller. Each of the RGB connections, uh, two from the fans and one from the pump, can be connected directly to the controller and then a SATA power connection from your PSU. The fans themselves were connected to the included splitter and then the CPU fan header and the micro USB cable connected to the pump, then also to a PSU SATA power connection. With the cooler mounted and everything powered up, uh, we can move on to testing. At KitGuru we test CPU coolers on the Z170 platform and for our CPU we are testing with the Intel Core i7-7700K installed on an Asus Z170 Pro gaming motherboard. For RAM we use a single stick of 8GB Guile Evo X RGB and that's running at 3200MHz. Storage is handled by a 120GB SanDisk SSD Plus and powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650W PSU. When testing, we take a number of readings with the 7700K's turbo locked, uh, overclocked to 4.5 and again at 5 GHz to really push those thermal limits. The temperatures taken are all delta T values, meaning we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. More details of our full testing methodology can be found over on kitguru.net. So let's take a look at the results. At 5 GHz performance, unfortunately, isn't amazing, with the Mercury 240 RGB sitting just above a number of air coolers previously tested. At 76.2 degrees, it's only a couple of degrees hotter than its closest competitor, the TDO2 RGB from Silverstone, and even its idle temps at 14.3 are a little bit higher than even some of the 120mm air coolers tested previously. Moving on to 4.5 GHz, temps look a little bit better, now outperforming some other coolers like the GamerStorm 240 AIOs, but again, not phenomenal. Idle temps are a little bit more middle of the pack at 12.3 degrees, Although temps were okay at 5 GHz, 4.5 seems to be a much more suitable overclocking middle ground for the Mercury 240 RGB. At 4 GHz stock, it's basically the same sort of case, performing on par with the GamerStorm Captain 240 EX. Idle temps still a little bit warmer than the competitors, but not the hottest that we've seen. Noise levels under full load, uh, only a tiny bit louder than the Antec Cooler H20K240, which does feature the same sort of fan design. The audible noise was noticeable even from around 5 to 6 feet away, uh, but it wasn't super irritating. So, from a performance perspective, the Mercury 240 RGB performed a little average at stock and 4.5GHz, but was let down a little at our higher 5GHz overclock. 
Moving on to lighting though, I would say it covers enough of the bases when it comes to RGB. With the included controller, you do have access to modes like static, breathing, strobing, and gradient color cycling, which is absolutely fine. Basically enough, but the breathing and strobing full RGB color changing modes are a little bit jarring and don't really transition as smoothly from color to color as I would have liked. Lighting does look great on the ringed fans though, and the illuminated Antec logo on the blocks top as well. It's not the brightest lighting, but still shines through well enough in a darker room. Lighting with the controller is a little bit simple. Uh, you do get all the colors you would expect um, and control of speed and brightness as well. For brightness, I basically just cranked it all to full and for color, I would expect most users to kind of just set it to match the rest of your system and basically leave it there. So kind of set and forget. There is of course always the option to connect everything up to your motherboard's internal header and control all of the lighting through software instead. So to summarize, what really blew me away with the Antec Mercury 240 RGB is just how premium it feels. The cooler and fans both feel reassuringly well built and solid, but part of this premium feel can be attributed to all of the accessories. All of the cables being braided and when requiring power SATA connected just makes everything feel so modern, uh, which may sound strange, but with some coolers I've tested recently, it's so disappointing to go and connect up your RGB controller, say, only to have a connection pop out of the Molex housing. Equally, although any cable braiding is appreciated, to find that one of the two cables running from your CPU block uh, being braided and the second is just bare does kind of beg the question, why really bother with the braiding at all? In the quality department, Antec have completely knocked it out of the park. Lighting is certainly RGB, but a little bit limited in its features, and making the LEDs addressable would have been totally awesome, but understandably a bit more expensive. Performance isn't really exceptional, but perfectly acceptable for stock speeds or a little bit of overclocking. Uh, there are certainly better options out there if you're really chasing down ice cold temps though. Overall, it's actually probably one of the better built coolers I've tested for £94.99, even if it's not up there with the best of the best in terms of performance. If you can find one on sale for closer to £80 though, the Antec Mercury 240 RGB suddenly becomes a much more tempting proposition. So if you like what you see, I'll definitely search out a deal. So make sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed this video or a dislike, and feel free to leave a comment below. Let us know what you think of the Antec Mercury 240 RGB. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing with a click of the button below, and make sure to hit the bell icon as well if you would like to be notified of new releases from KitGuru. At KitGuru, we have recently opened up a little merch store, uh, so head over to the link below to grab yourself a cool t-shirt or even a mug for your morning coffee. And if you would like to support KitGuru further and the content that we produce, make sure to check out our new Patreon page for opportunities to see videos before anybody else. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.